Hello, another hangout on Dungeon Alchemist. After our last run through, which was all based on the 0.1.5 beta, we've now got the 0.2.1 beta that released today. My plan is um, and was to run through the basic control, so I'm not going to go over the main functionality. Not a lot has changed drastically. There were a couple of nice little additions, the big one being that there is now a far wider zoom function, so you can wide out, you can zoom out to a far greater distance than you could before. You can put in some walls and move them around, and it's Halloween, so there are pumpkins! Um, that said, I'm going to move over, we'll look at it, and my plan for these videos is to go over the basic functionality. So in this one we'll be looking predominantly at the menu settings and what each of them do. Then there'll be a second video at inserting objects, um, putting, laying down rooms, and we'll go through all of the pieces in several just short videos. So to keep it short, moving over. File. So when you come in, you will start with, as I mentioned before, a new map. Print map. You've got an option of your paper sizes and the layout if you want it in landscape or portrait. You've got American standards and then you've got the international standards. Or you can do your own custom. So they're designed predominantly if you want to print. Um, width size and then an option for the size of your tiles um, inches or centimeters digital you just got tile sizes width and height how big do you want it to be then create that simple showing the nice wide zoom we've now got thanks guys it's much appreciated. That can now come out to a good distance. Back to our file. Open map does what it says on the tin, goes to the open list. Save, immediate save with control S as usual. Save as to save as something else. Export is something we'll look at later in more detail. Exit leaves the software. Edit, standard, undo and redo with the expected shortcut keys. View, that's just been added in this version. It was still there with the Alt Enter shortcut, but now you can enter or leave full screen from the menu. Beta feedback is just there, so we've got an easy way to keep feedback on what we find. And then help, how to draw a room, camera controls, Camera controls. Object controls. Then you've got patch notes, links to their website, and their terms of use, which it's worth looking at. They're actually very liberal. Um, it's going to be a great facility for a lot of people with a lot of ability to use it when you're streaming. Um, in semi-commercial settings where you're not making a huge amount of money without needing an expensive commercial license. Um, whether their commercial terms will manage to stay as generous as they are now, no, we will still wait to see, but I would go to their website if you want to use it for commercial reasons and check terms of use. And don't be scared if you think, well, I'll never be able to afford it because you might be nicely surprised. So that's all of those. You've got a slider for zoom on the front, and then the little icon off to the side changes between 3D and orthographic views. So nice and simple down the side here. If I turn off this menu, click to turn on a menu, click to turn off. Top is for drawing rooms. Then 
I've got no room, so by that we move on to the subsequent menus. AI on and off, what do you want it to do? So let's quickly just put in a script dungeon and go. It's amazing just how quick and easy this is. So now we have a dungeon. Go into 3D view because it's more interesting. Mouse controls are nice and easy. Right is your main control. Center button rotates in the world and gives you your zoom. Right button enables you to pan. If you're used to software where you have 3D controls, they're not always the same, but the basic functionality is not uncommon. Not a bad little dungeon for one start. So in here, as you can see with that, we've got the type of environment and these are going to keep increasing. And what kind of room you're putting into the environment that tells the AI what it needs to do. Place objects, type of object. So we've got items that hang on walls, food and food type things, furniture, lights, plants, chests and containers, stairs and workshops. And you saw down the other side, and again these will all expand, there's a wide collection of different options that can be brought in. Place wall options. So we've got actual walls. So I can come into my dungeon and say, I'm going to use some catacomb walls. And I want to change those walls to X. At the moment, I don't believe you can directly place walls after you've done your initial build, but that will probably come with time. Floor tiles, again, you've got stone floors, and then you've got outside. And last but not least, environmental settings, which enable you to change the time of day. If you're planning on exporting it as an image or exporting it to the real world. So that's just a quick basic look at the raw functionality you can get when using Dungeon Alchemist and after this I will go through and we can look at each individual function actually building up and working within the map and laying items. So I'll see you on the next video.